Hello, this is Mr. Magic again, bringing you another deck tech. And um, this time I have stumbled upon a deck that is stupidly good, actually. Um, and, you know, surprisingly, because I just built it and uh, took it to an FNM and won first place. And it's not like I had a, like easy mass matchups either. It was uh, Green White, Megamorph, and uh, Jeskai Black were two decks that I beat, um, and they had great draws. They didn't they didn't uh, get stuck on mana or anything. So um, this deck worked really well. Um, so to explain kind of what the deck does, it's an Abzan. Uh, aggro control enchantments exiling deck. <laughs> There's lots of themes going on. Um, I have no idea what to call it because there's too many themes and there's not really like a, a catchy name that I can think of. But if you can think of a catchy name, that'd be that'd be cool. You could put it in the comments. Um, so some unusual cards in this deck. I mean, a lot of these cards are unusual. Uh, there, oh, there's only a few cards in here that are, you know, played in Abzan normally. Uh, Anna Fenza is one of them. And uh, we're not really playing Anna Fenza for the, uh, for the counters, although it is kind of helpful sometimes. Um, it's mostly for the exiling part of it, so that uh, whenever something they die, whatever a creature they control dies, it exiles instead of dying, which makes Hangerback Walker terrible. Um, it's just like a 1-1 one, one that gets bigger and you have to tap it. It's terrible with that out. Um, but one of the reasons we're exiling so much stuff is Wasteland Stranglers. Uh, this card is amazing. Um, <clears throat> and the reason is because it's 3 mana, it kills their guy, and it gives you a threat. Uh, which is really, really good. This It's kind of like a tempo deck, so um, there's lots of plays that are... Um, that are like kill your guy, play a little guy, pass. So you just kind of like slowly build up board state um, just by incremental advantage. So it doesn't really go big, like uh, it doesn't just destroy the board, but it just takes out their key threats every turn. Um, and that's important. And plus, Wasteland Strangler hits most things in standard right now. Um, it hits the. Uh, Manus Riders, Soulfire Grandmasters, uh, lots of the Jeskai stuff, um, and then a lot of the Abzan stuff too. So it's really good. Um, and we've got uh, Abzan Beastmasters, another card you don't see very often. Um, and uh, it's one of the main sources of, uh, of card advantage in this deck. And the reason why it's so good, I mean, you wouldn't think it's that good just by looking at it. It's like 2-1, uh, and um, if you have this certain condition, you get to draw a card then at the beginning of your turn. But the thing is, this deck has so much removal that you're almost always going to remove their biggest threat, whatever they have with the biggest toughness. So um, even if you just have him out, uh, sometimes it'll just tie with tokens because it does t it does draw if it if it's tied for the greatest toughness. So um, let's say you kill a hanger back and they get a bunch of one ones and you have this guy out. Uh, it's still tied. You still get a card. So he replaces himself immediately, or not immediately, but uh, the next turn. And he's just annoying for people because they have to deal with him, or else I just get more card advantage than them. And you know, it's good. So three of those. Um, originally there was two, but uh, they're good enough to run three. So, um, Archfiend of Depravity is another card uh, you might see in other decks. It's uh, I actually ne haven't played it yet because there's only a one of, and uh, I don't think I played it at all. Um, but it's great against a lot of matchups uh, where they want to like go wide and just make a bunch of guys. Uh, um, so you play this and then uh, they have to sacrifice and then you can start picking off their guys with um, with the small, uh, with the single target removal. Um, so he's pretty good. I, I haven't gotten to play him yet, but um, he's pretty 
He's been good in other decks, so I'm assuming he's good in this one. Okay, so here's uh, one of the theme. Another one of the themes is enchantments. So uh, Herald of the Pantheon makes all your enchantments cost one less, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain a life. So I'll show you how many enchantments there are in this deck. Uh, there's a lot of sequences uh, where you play this on turn two, and then you just get like so much like like value out of um, out out of it just by playing things cheaper. So like uh, Citadel Siege can come down on turn three, for example, and just pump him up, um, uh, or you can just uh, pick the second one and you know it's a removal spell basically. Um, and then Quarantine Field, uh, on turn 5, you will have an equivalent of 6 mana because of the Herald, and you can exile 2 things, which is insane on turn 5. Um, and then you've got Stasis Snares, which are only going to cost 2 white with him out. Um, so on turn 4 you can play him and then this on, on their turn, kill their biggest threat. Uh, it just makes everything very efficient and fast. Uh, and then Silk Wraps only cost one, which is probably the most insane thing. Um, yeah. And again, Silk Wrap is super good because it hits everything. Um, yeah, so that's the Herald. Um, and that's not the only enchantment based thing in this deck. There is uh, Blood Cursed Knight, so it gets plus one, plus one life link if you have a, an enchantment. And this card is really important for getting you back in the game um, against really fast decks. Uh, if you, let's say, play a Silk Wrap and then play a Blood Curse Knight on turn 3, uh, that's a 4-3 lifelink guy on turn 3. I mean, that's really strong, especially against aggro. Um, and they're going to have to either deal with it or you're going to gain all your life back and have a huge threat. So a common, uh, common play will be Silk Wrap, Blood Curse Knight, and then Citadel Siege making it a 6-5 and just attacking, and then eight, uh, an 8-7 and attacking. I mean, it can get out of hand so quick, uh, just from the lifelink. I mean, you can just race them all day long. Um, another kind of related thing to the enchantments are the Battle Brawlers. And a lot of people underestimate this card as being bad, um, but it is very very good. I mean it tri it kills everything that you care about in the early turns and doesn't die itself and it just it just is really good in combat. So I mean you can play Silk Wrap then Battle Brawler and then it gets the plus, plus one plus oh first strike and uh, or you can start pu pumping it up with Citadel Siege again gets first strike so it's, it's just very very hard to deal with in combat so nothing barely anything blocks favorably. Um, even Siege Rhino, this plus a, uh, a Citadel Siege pump, it first strikes their Siege Rhino, so it just, it beats Siege Rhino. Um, same with Abzan Charm, you can, uh, Battle Brawler, and then Abzan Charm putting the two counters on it and first strike their Siege Rhino, etc. There's, I mean, there's, it's very, very good. Um, it gets through Mana Riders, which is also really important because Mana Rider is kind of a, a card that's very good aggressively and defensively, but this card don't just get through it anyway, so that's really good. Um, and Offenza, I already explained, uh, you can see the Exile piece is really fun with the Wasteland Strangler. Um, you can do some pretty funny things, uh, you can Silk Wrap, and then um, Wasteland Strangler, and then since the text says uh, if a creature card would be put in a, an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, that includes exile, um, it's exiled instead. So you basically just take it from exile and then put it right, right back into exile, where it can never come back. So, um, yeah. It's just, it hoses so many good things, too. I mean, like I said before. Archangel of Tithes. Um, this is just a great uh, flying threat, and I figured uh, I probably need some um, some defense against lots of little creatures. 
and and the um, paying one for each of those creatures slows them down a lot. So and, and it's a great blocker. It blocks siege right now, and it's going to be a threat in the late game when you have uh, when you have the uh, C uh, citadel sieges out and you just pump it and hit for flying every turn. I mean, it's very good. Um, so two of those, basically just because I needed to fill out my four drops spot a little bit, and it's a great um, it's a great threat. Uh, yeah, so the removal is three silk wraps, uh, three stasis snares, two abzan charms, four citadel sieges, two uh, quarantine fields, and one obnixilis. So there is a ton of removal in here. Um, I think I gotta count. Let's see. Three here uh, kill creatures, one here, so that's four. Um, then you've got. Uh, 7, 10, 12, uh, 16, 18, 19. So 19 pieces of removal. And then you plus, plus you also have the Archangel of Ties, which makes it harder for them to attack anyways. So that's 19 pieces of removal is like every three cards you get a piece of removal. And most of the removal, or some of the removal is also threats or can act as threats. So... For instance, Obnixilis is removal, but also it can uh, get you cards and then finally ult and be a threat. Um, Citadel Siege is the only four of in the deck, and the reason is it's the best top deck in so many situations that it, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's extremely good, especially early with the uh, Herald of the Pantheon. Um, it just it either taps down th taps down their threat every turn, um, something you don't want to attack. You know, uh, the siege rhinos, those uh, you know big uh, dash creatures, stuff like that. It's, it's just really good. Um, so it's it's a removal piece, like it's you know four mana removal. Um, it works pretty well with that, and it's. Even if you do play it for the second ability that taps, um, it's still aggressive because it means you you can get through that creature. So um, you can tap their biggest blocker or their biggest attacker, depending on um, depending on if you're trying to go aggressive or if you're trying to be defensive. And almost every single time I've played this card, I've always picked the first one, just because I have so much other removal that already just deals with their stuff that. Um, I almost always want to play it for the first one just to push through damage. Um, and this card, the reason there's four is because there are so many small creatures that just become a threat right when you play them if, if you have this out. So, I mean, uh, none of your top decks are going to be that bad with this activated. So, like, if you have a, a counters thing and, you know, they, they have a, a big creature or whatever, and you have no cards in hand, I mean, you could just, uh, I mean, dropping a Battle Brawler, which normally would be terrible in the late game, is now crazy good, <laughs> because it's a 5-4 first strike for two, um, with the Citadel Siege out, that's just going to get bigger over time, so every single thing you play is going to be a threat uh, in the late game, if you have it out. Or you have the uh, Blood Curse Knight, it immediately becomes a 6-5 lifelink. Um, so it just makes all your top decks really good. Uh, it makes the Wasteland Strangler uh, not quite as just useless like uh, after you play it the first time. You know, it, you know it, it, it looks like a creature where you just play it, kill the creature, and then it just kind of sits there and doesn't do much. But with the Citadel Sieges out, it makes it... A threat, so it makes everything a threat. Even the Beastmasters, Herald of Pantheons, just everything. So that card is extremely good. I don't, I don't know why it's not played as much, but um, it's really good. Uh, quarantine fields <coughs> are super good. I don't know why more people don't play these. These are super, super ridiculous. Uh, it's the best top deck you can hope for. Especially with the Herald of the Pantheon out. I mean, you have seven mana, and you top deck this, and you get to exile three of their things, 
three other non-lane permanents. I mean, I've, I've had situations against Control where they have <clears throat> a flipped Jace and a, and a Narset out and a massive Hangerback Walker, and there is no chance of living, and then you just pull this off the top, and you're like, well, I guess I just wipe your entire board, and then we start over. Like, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. This card's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, two of those. Um, there's one in the sideboard also against control. Um, uh, if, if there's more stuff that you want to get rid of that's not creatures, then this is great. It's even great against creatures, so, you know. Um, Omnixilis, uh, there's one in here, and uh, might put another one in for the Arc Fiend. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, against control, it's awesome. I mean, they're never going to be able to kill it. It's really, really hard for them to kill it. Even if you, uh, you you play it and plus one it, and they hit it with Ojutai, it still goes down to one and still still alive, and then you can just kill their Ojutai. Like, it just keeps plusing and plusing and plusing and getting you card advantage, which is not what Control wants you to do. So it's super good. And I think there's... Uh, I have two more. One of them might go on the sideboard or on the main deck. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, for the mana base, uh, there's only really one important card uh, to note. Shambling Vent. So there are three Shambling Vents in here. And again, this is just, you know, it doesn't seem like much. It's just a 2-3 lifelink. It costs a lot to activate. And, you know, it, it, you're not going to use it that often. But in the late game, when you have nothing out, and you just have a Citadel Siege with counters... This thing will be awesome, and especially against control where they can't uh, deal with um, with man lands very easily unless they have instant speed removal, which is pretty low in this format. Um, it, I mean, it'll just keep getting bigger and bigger and, and pulling you back in the game with the lifelink, so it's great. And then the other stuff uh, is just normal Abzan, you know, kind of lands. Uh, I think it's like four caves, four uh, Lanoir Wastes, four Sand Steps, four Windswept Teeths, one Canopy Vista. I didn't really want to play more of these because uh, I don't like coming in to play tapped and you really only need one. I mean, uh, uh, we don't have anything that costs like double green, so yeah, you only need one green, so there's no reason to put just jam a bunch of these in. You can always just search for it with fetches. Um, yeah, so that's the mana base pretty much. I mean, it's pretty simple. And then the rest are basics. Uh, there's one forest. Um, I don't remember if there's any swamps. I don't think there's any swamps at all. Because we don't have any fetches for swamps. Uh, we just have the dual lands for swamps and the um, tri lands. Um, yeah, so the rest are, are planes. So one, one uh, forest and the rest are planes. And it's 25 lands, by the way. Um, so it, it's pretty low. Uh, 25 is like right around the mid-range curve, and uh, we want to curve out a lot in this deck, so we like we like having mana quite a bit. Um, and as you can see, it's mostly white. I mean, there's uh, things that have like uh, one of either color in it, but that's pretty easy to do. Um, there's a lot of like this is triple white. This is double white double white, double white, I mean you'd think it'd be hard to do but it's not in this format at all. Um, I've had no problem playing Archangel of Tives on turn 4 like every single game so um, I think there's like 20 white sources in here so I mean you're you're definitely gonna hit that many white sources. Um, <clears throat> so yeah that's the main deck uh, and then I have a, a sideboard kinda put together um, but it's not complete. There should be two more cards in here. I think they're going to be, um, probably the Knight of the White Orchid. Uh, so three duresses. Uh, the three duresses are for, um, things, especially, uh, mass removal is really good to get rid of with these um, since they can't really they can't respond to it so you know if you suspect 
uh, that they're holding on to mass removal and letting you build up your board. This is just awesome. You just play it, get rid of their mass removal, and then you know their whole plan is ruined. They just let you build up your board, and you and now they can't do anything about it. <clears throat> so that's good. It's also great against counter counter uh, counter spells. So against control, um, you play it, and they, either they counter it or they um, let you just take your their counter spell. And uh, since it costs one mana, I mean. As you can see, everything is really cheap, so you just play this and then play your threat and uh, can't do anything about it. Um, Knight of the White Orchid, I do have two more of these. Uh, I just need to put them in the sideboard. But um, <clears throat> basically, this is great against, I mean, it's just, it's great on the draw. I mean, you could just stick it in for uh, um, probably the, uh, the Battle Brawlers. On the draw, if you really want to, um, Battle Brawler can be better than it a lot of the time, just because of the three power instead of the two power. But if you really want to get like ahead really quick, uh, this is really good. I mean, <clears throat> the double white's not very hard to do. Just drop it on turn two, get another land, and then play another two drop. Like it's it's crazy. Um, or drop it on turn three, or whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so there should be two more of these. So three of them in the sideboard. Uh, I got two palace sieges in the sideboard, and these are for control. And um, yeah, I played a uh, played against a um, fog deck, the you know the uh, Sphinx's tutelage one. <clears throat> and uh, you play this, and they lose basically. I mean. As long as you get it out early enough, they just lose. And uh, it brings back your your threats over and over again. So with the palace, or yeah, palace siege and a citadel siege up, you can just keep playing threats, and they keep getting bigger. And it's like, you know, it's unstoppable, which is awesome. It's not in the main deck because, um, you know, it's pretty slow. It's really only good against other slow decks. Uh, three virulent plagues. And uh, as you can see, a lot of this is uh, single target removal, which is not great against tokens. Uh, there's some token decks that are really good. So Violent Plague just hoses their strategy. So I put three in there. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. Their enchantments, they kind of work with the other stuff. And uh, they just completely ruin their strategy. So three of those in there. Uh, three Ration Clerics. Um, for against control, I mean not against control, uh, against aggro, um, and those can go again, uh, go in for um, some of the top end stuff. Uh, like you can take out a few citadel sieges because it's not going to be great against aggro. Um, you can even take out uh, two quarantine fields because again it's kind of expensive for killing aggro stuff. So um, yeah, just, just three of those because they're just a great card to get back in the game. And then one more quarantine field um, against control and against uh, slower decks that have a lot of permanence and stuff. So, yeah, that's the sideboard. Um, like I said, I mean, like uh, yesterday was the first time I had ever played this deck um, against another person, and uh, it it did super well. I mean, I didn't even have to adjust anything, and it was. I mean, it played perfectly, so um, I'm really looking forward to playing this deck more and uh, tweaking it and uh, making making additions and stuff um, that I hope you enjoyed. Uh, so this is Abzan Enchantments uh, Exiling Tempo Control. Uh, or, I don't know, uh, Abzan Exile or Abzan something, I don't know. Just uh, make a nickname for it and, and put it in the comments. Alright, glad you enjoyed.